Okay, so um, I started uh, playing drums. Well, I first sat down at a drum kit when I was 13 years old. Um, and it came off the back of, um, weirdly, playing the saxophone. I, I was learning the saxophone at school when I was 11 and um, I was really into jazz. And my dad um, said, well, there's a great jazz band coming to town. I'll take you to see them. They've got a great sax player called Steve Marcus. Um, and that band was the Buddy Rich big band. So I, I, left, um, I left that hall wanting to play the drums um, at 11 years old. And um, I, I was pretty lucky to see Buddy uh, at that time because six months after that, he sadly passed away. So um, I really caught the back end of his career and when he was playing at his best, really. Um, and I, um, I went home. My dad used to play uh, guitar in a rock and roll band. And he, um, he, gave, he got his old drummer to give me a pair of sticks. And it was very, very stereotypical playing on Tupperware around the house. Um, and then when I got to high school, there was a drum kit knocking about. I used to go in at lunchtime, sneak in and pl play on the drums. Uh, and then from there, my music teacher heard me playing, realised I had some kind of a rhythm. And uh, I, uh, he asked me to join the school jazz band and the school big band because there were no drummers in the school at that time. So I was dead lucky I was thrown right in at the deep end playing music from, from day one, really. And um, from there, I, it, was just, it was only ever a hobby. Um, I was listening to Buddy. All I was listening to was Buddy um, around that time, just getting all the records, slowing them down, trying to figure out all the, all the chops and everything. I'm still working on that. Um, and uh, from there, left school. Um, Again, self-taught, I was self-taught as a drummer, so I uh, left school, um, decided to go to university uh, to study uh, what was called band musicianship at Salford, um, and had a great time there, did four years there. Um, after a couple of years, I joined the school, uh, the university big band. Um, it took me a couple of years because the first year I auditioned I didn't get the job because I couldn't read because I'm self-taught, nobody taught me how to read. So I went and studied or sat behind Mike Smith, great British drummer Mike Smith, um, who was playing at the time for the BBC big band and I used to go down to uh, Birmingham and sit behind him recording the sessions uh, and just ask him loads of questions about how he was sight, I mean he's one of the greatest sight readers I've ever come across. Um, and I, I was really committed to getting my reading together so that I could join the university big band. A couple of years later, that's what happened. And it was through doing that that I got my first proper professional gig, um, which was with the Andy Pryor Orchestra. Andy was a, um, a singer doing kind of Sinatra uh, covers uh, and original material as well with a full big band. And in my last two years of college, I was touring all around the UK, writing essays in the back of tour buses, and we were having 100 to 150 dates a year, which was a great experience. And it kind of snowballed from there, really. Um, people came through that band, heard me play, realised I could read. Um, I started getting a bit of show work, theatre work, doing touring shows. Always in the back of my mind, knowing that I wanted to move to London um, to pursue the career. Um, and having moved to London, um, got a few West End shows under my belt. I did the Rat Pack for four years. I did Producers for six months. I did Priscilla, Queen of the Desert for three years. And, um, and here we are. It's just a, a, different, um, a different thing now where, where I'm, I'm not so much doing shows now. I, I've gone more into sort of working with different artists and playing, uh, playing for a wide variety of different artists with different styles, which is what I kind of always wanted as a player. Um, I wanted to be versatile. My heroes were versatile. Um, people like Steve Gadd, um, Vinnie Caliuta, um, and in this country, people like Ian Thomas, Neil Wilkinson, Mike Smith, Ralph Salmons, guys that can sort of do everything and anything, uh, whether it's a reading gig, a jazz gig, a pop gig. Um, that was cool. That was always my my what I felt I wanted to do and and hopefully I'll continue to do that it's it's not going too bad at the moment I think okay so the main influence um, for anyone that knows me was was Buddy Rich um, he's the first guy I saw that made me want to start playing the drums um, 
Weirdly, prior to that, there was, um, even though I wasn't playing the drums, I was really into, or my mum was really into a guy called Sandy Nelson, who was a, an American drummer that released a few drum solo records that, that got into the charts, actually, things like Drums Are My Beat and Let There Be Drums. Um, so from a really early age, maybe even three or four years old, my mum was listening to those records around the house, so that was probably kind of sinking in. Um, and I used to listen to a lot of his records as well, um, but Buddy was the main, the main influence. Um, and again, being self-taught, I didn't have anyone telling me who else to check out. So it was kind of Buddy, Buddy, Buddy for so long. And then when the Buddy Rich Memorial videos came out, that was my first introduction to the likes of Dennis Chambers, Steve Gadd, Dave Weckl, uh, Vinnie Caliuta, um, Louis Belson, who... Uh, who, uh, you know, at the time I went out and bought Louis Belson's um, instructional video, which is incredible. Um, I remember thinking at the time, my God, this guy's the one guy I've seen that can match Buddy Rich for technique. Um, but seeing all the, the modern guys at the time, you know, the Gads, the Vinnies, the Weckles, Dennis, um, that, was a, that was a massive eye-opener. And, and uh, I went out and bought all the electric band albums. I went and bought all... Uh, anything with those guys on, really. Um, and it was only, I guess, later on that I went back and started looking at other jazz guys, people like Elvin Jones, Philly Joe, Max Roach, Art Blakey, um, and checking out all those guys and really, um, really getting into their playing. Um, when I joined the, uh, the big band, the Sinatra big band, um, uh, for Andy Pryor, the, the, my first touring gig, um, I got told to go and check out Irv Cutler, who was um, Frank Sinatra's drummer for about 25 years. And that really uh, changed the way I played big band, because at that, at that time I was playing very much, very chopsy, a lot of fills around the kit, a la Buddy Rich, really. But when you're playing for a singer, you can't really do that. Um, so listening to the way Irv Cutler played with Frank Sinatra, changed everything and and that's kind of stuck with me on, on, on that style um, and then it's just to everyone and every anyone and everyone really um, you know I, I love the groove players the song players people who just play it simple um, Steve Jordan a lot of the stuff he's doing with John Mayer and all the artists he's played for I love that that vibe Jeff Picaro obviously Carlos Vega um, who did all those incredible albums with James Taylor um, just a, a perfect player and I still like the Chopsy guys I love uh, what Tony Royster Jr is doing I love Chris Coleman he's blowing me away at the moment um, oh and Gary Novak Gary Novak, man he's the most underrated guy I've ever come across um, he took over um, from Dave Weckl in the Chick Career Electric Band in about 1992 or 93 and he was only 23 at the time and he totally blew me away um, just a beautiful, beautiful um, groove player, so much depth to his playing, but incredible chops to boot. He's kind of the complete player. Um, so I guess those are, those are kind of my influences at the moment. Well, some of my influences, there are, there are plenty more. You know, anyone who, anyone who uh, tells me to go and check something out, I immediately check it out, and usually I'll go and buy every, everything that they're on the back catalog of, um, get kind of engrossed in someone's play. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, those are my kind of influences. Okay, so most of my time um, is spent up at the moment working for a few different artists. Um, I play for Leo Sayer. Um, I've done one UK tour with him about 18 months ago so far. We did a little tour of Mal Malaysia earlier this year. And we've got a big two month UK tour coming up in September and October. Uh, so watch out for, for that, that should be a really good tour. He's got a new album out that, um, that he's promoting. Um, I play for a guy called Tony Christie, who um, uh, had a big hit in the 70s and more recently in the sort of early 2000s uh, with a song called Is This The Way To Amarillo, which Peter Kay um, regenerated for uh, Comic Relief a few oh. years ago. Um, so I enjoy playing with him and I'm, music, I'm musical director for that gig at the moment. We've got a bunch of dates coming up over the summer with him. Um, I also play for another uh, British artist called Joe Longthorne who um, had a massive TV career in the sort of late 80s and early 90s. 
and he's still out there um, doing theatre shows with. He's kind of a real jack of all trades, a real sort of great British crooner. Um, there's a bit of swing stuff in there, a bit of sort of big ballad kind of playing. That's a quite heavy reading gig. Um, so that, that keeps my reading chops going. Um, and uh, I do a lot of stuff with the Rat Pack, which is um, a, a, a kind of a tribute show that uh, is a tribute to Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis and Dean Martin. Um, we've got a bunch of dates coming up in Europe very soon with them. Um, and aside from that, it's whoever, whoever calls. Um, I, run my, I do my own projects as well. I've got a couple of things that I'm working on at the moment. Um, I run a band called the Elliot Henshaw Band, which is a five-piece lineup uh, of guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, and sax. Um, I've already done one album that's out there at the moment called Is That Not What You Wanted? Um, that was released in 2004. And I'm, in 2012, I started recording a second album, which I'm still trying to get finished. Um, it's hard work. The, the guys that are in the band are, are all absolutely at the top of their game, really busy. Uh, professional musicians, so it's hard getting them together to do their to do their bit. But we persevere. Um, hopefully, the saxophone is going down uh, later on in May. Um, all the drums have been done um, and the bass. So uh, it's a slow process, but we're gonna I'm gonna have some uh, different special guests on that album as well. Bob Mincer's done a track. Bob Mincer from the Yellow Jackets. Um, and hopefully I'm going to get a, a special guest drummer to do a, a double drum track with me. Um, the other project that I run at the moment is I co-run a, a big band called Spice Fusion, which is not a big band that does traditional big band material. It does more uh, Latin, funk, fusion, bit of smooth in there. It's kind of um, melody-driven, groove-based music, I would call it. And um, I co-run that with Simon Niblock, who's a fantastic uh, arranger and saxophonist. Um, and we, we do some of my originals there. We do um, a bit of Dave Grusin sort of stuff, a bit of Tom Scott, a um, bit of David Sanborn. Um, it's a real mixed bag. And uh, we've done a few gigs uh, with that band at the Hippodrome Casino in London. And uh, we've done an album that's out there, which is called Trying Too Hard. And again, this, in the next few weeks, we're going to start recording a second album. So that takes up a lot of time with it being a big band. You've got to try and organise 20 guys um, to get together and perform. But um, a lot of fun and, and keeps me musically sane when, uh, when I get bogged down with uh, all the other stuff that's, uh, that's going on in my life. Okay, so the gear I'm using um, at the moment for pretty much everything I do um, the drums are Echo Custom Drums. Um, these guys I met at the London Drum Show about three years ago. Um, and they're from Manchester, which is where I'm from. And that immediately sort of attracted me to them because I, I, I love using um, gear that's, that's kind of homebred. And uh, the interesting thing about all these drums is they're all made out of aluminium. Um, there's no wood involved. Um, and the company's run by a guy called um, Dave Quinn, who uh, started off, I think, making snare drums. And he's got an incredible array of snare drums um, that he makes. And, um, and then he got into thinking, well, let's see what it sounds like making a, a full kit made of aluminium. I think they make them in al aluminium, copper, brass. Um, and it's great because you just go down to the factory um, and pretty much tell them exactly what you want, what lugs you want, what hoops you want, what shells you want, the colours. Um, and within a few weeks they've made them all up for you and, and you get a lovely sparkling new kit like this one. And they sound incredible. I've, I've had um, a few different things off them. I've, this What I'm using today is an 18 by 16, 10 by 8, uh, 12 by 10, 14 by 14. Um, and the snare drum is uh, 14 by, I think it's 14 by 6. And um, yeah, they, they sound great. I've, I've also got a, uh, a 22 by 19, I think, at home. Uh, and I've got a 13 and a 16 as well. So I can really mix and match the, uh, match the setups. Um, and they record great, they sound great live. Um, I tend to 
do gigs and not tell the sound engineer or the producer or whatever that they're aluminium and uh, and until afterwards and I, and I always say how do, how do the drums sound? I say, oh, sound great. I said yeah they're all aluminium and they can't believe it as I couldn't believe it when I first played them you know I was a little bit skeptical when I was told that they make metal drums but no I'm really happy with them been with them a while and will continue to be hopefully um, cymbals Zildjian all my heroes played Zildjian when I was growing up it, it's uh, a real honour to be with that company um, I'm using today the Coropes which are their latest uh, flagship model, 15-inch um, hi-hats, and then I've got an 18 here, uh, a 22, and a 19. Um, they absolutely do everything I want from a cymbal. They're dark, I love dark sounds. Um, and Zildjian as a company, and Tina Clark there, just been amazing to me over the last few years. Um, so yeah, Zildjian cymbals. Um, sticks, I'm using Vata, or Vata, however you pronounce it. Um, I'm using the uh, 7A model at the moment. I started off with them using the 5As um, and then just tried the 7As and I would never go back. I just, they give me the right amount of um, flexibility. I really like the, uh, the beaded tip. Um, and it means I can play a little bit faster as well because I'm getting old and I don't want too much, um, too much to get in the way of my aching bones. Um, Skins or heads, uh, Aquarian, been with Aquarian for about five or six years now. Um, I'm terrible at tuning drums, so when I first tried, it was Neil Wilkinson that put me onto Aquarian. And when I uh, first tried putting them on, on my setup at the time, it took me next to no time at all to get a really good sound out of the drums. And that's why I want, um, I want something I can just put on, tighten it up, and away we go. And, and the, these do just that, they're, they're brilliant heads. Um, and uh, you won't see them here, but I, I, I use protection racket cases. Um, Dean Bowdry at Protection Racket's been fantastic uh, and really looked after me. And um, a few other bits and bobs that I use. Uh, I use um, uh, Reed Audio in-ear monitors for a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. Um, they're a fantastic company. They come around your house, take the moulds of your ears, and a day later or two days later, you've got, you've got your in-ear monitors. It takes no time at all. And they're perfect for what I do for, for, for the sort of West End stuff when you're in the pit and you need to hear everyone. And also live, um, I was using them with Tony Christie. I'll probably end up using them with Leo Sayer uh, on his tour later on. So they're really cool. Um, Lion Cajons, I use, uh, I use uh, when I'm doing Cajon work, I use Lion Cajons who, again, just beautiful people. A great, great company um, that can't do enough for you. Um, so... Yeah, I'm really lucky with the, with the, with the stuff that I use. Um, I have a Roland set up at home for practice as well. Roland have been great. Um, you make one phone call and a few days later it all gets delivered to your house, all brand spanking new. Uh, and uh, another company that have been great to me over the years uh, are Porter & Davis who uh, invented the BC2, which is um, like a vibrating drum stool that uh, vibrates when you hit the bass drum. Um, they kind of saved my life, those guys. Um, I always used to have uh, trouble getting a really good sound on stage because um, I'd always want a lot of kick drum in my monitor, but that low frequency just wiped everything else out. Um, but now I don't have any kick drum in my ears or on the monitor because I feel it all through the stool and it, and it, it just meant that I didn't have to play so hard and, and my, my technique didn't suffer a, a, as a result. So um, yeah, the BC2, it's worth, worth checking out. Um, there's a lot of big guys using, using that stuff now. I think J.R. Robinson uses them and uh, Gavin Harrison. So yeah, check, check those guys out, they're brilliant. Uh, so if anyone wants to get in touch with anything I've talked about uh, today or anything else really, um, you can find me at, um, at elliothenshaw.com. There's an email address there, elliot at elliothenshaw.com. Get in touch. I'm always uh, always uh, keen to help and, and answer any questions that anyone might have.